Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, I know you're looking at the screen right now. You're seeing about that fish and that serpent again. And it's like, oh gosh, brother, you've already spoke about this before. We're going to get into something a little different though today. And um, it stems from Matthew chapter 7, of course. Judge not that you be not judged. And very famous uh, passage that so many of us know about. Uh, and it's often used, especially for those that hate the condemnation that is often applied where people are trying to put you back under the law, things like that. So we're going to get into this today. We're going to be talking uh, from the book of Luke, from Genesis, the fall in the garden, Galatians included there, uh, where it speaks about the curse of the law and everyone that hangs upon a tree. Uh, cursed, or cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Um, Going to be using modern English though because we want the Google, we want the translation portion of this message to be able to be translated properly. Going to go into Joel and Hosea about the former and latter rain. And then we're going to tie this back up into the book of Numbers. But you're going to discover something from Matthew chapter 7. An amazing chapter. An amazing insight that Jesus spoke 2,000 years ago that it's gone completely. It's just like I, I was blown away by it. Uh, and you're going to find out how well it all ties together. What does the judgment have to do with, for example, uh, the serpent here and the fish? And what does that have to do with uh, prophets that come in sheep's clothing or, or, or you know, the, do men gather grapes and thorns under, under a fig uh, or figs from a thistles? And what does that really have to do when we look here at the very near the end there about the guy that builds his house upon the rock or the one that builds his house upon the sand? Well, there's some amazing insights that I, I mean, I am just in awe over and I can't wait to share that with you so we're going to do that here uh, we're going to get started as quickly as I can first real quick just as a reminder those that feel led in your heart to support the work we do our website you can always see it at the top of the screen israelinewslive.org uh, and if God lays upon your heart to help support this work we greatly appreciate it you can donate by clicking right there online or you even see above the, the uh, video are my name, Stephen Benoon, P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee 37872. Or just click right there online and you can donate right there. And no, you don't have to just have PayPal. You can use any debit or credit card you want just by clicking that link right there. Um, or, you know, I'm sorry, not even a link. Just take however, however God lays on your heart. So we appreciate that. And I don't want to waste any time with that. Uh, let me get back over here to this, though. And we're going to be getting into this. And I really think it's going to be a blessing to you. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. That is a very, very deep implication right there. And this is what Jesus started off by saying there. And he's, he's really dealing with the law. So if you don't want to fall under judgment then don't start trying to judge the people by the law. That's the first thing we can do. Notice what he says, though. Why behold you the mote that is in your brother's eye, but you don't consider the beam that's in your own eye? Or how will you say to your brother, let me pull out the mote that's in your eye, and behold, a beam is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of your own eye, and then shall you see clearly to cast out the beam that's in, or the mote that's in your brother's eye. Give not which that is holy unto the dogs, and neither cast you your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Now, by the way, verse 6, what he's speaking about right here is that you do not take these great mysteries and just give them to anybody. Things that you're going to hear about today. Don't cast your pearls before swine because they will trample them under their feet and they're going to make fun of it only to hurt you with it. 
Let's go on. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Now this kind of seems odd. We start off, Jesus starts off by judge not, you know, here we go. Judge not that you be not judged. And yet then we go right into the faith message. And it almost seems like, okay, he's teaching one thing here in the first few verses, and then he starts teaching another subject altogether. But it's actually going to all be related together. And that's what I want you to try to see here today. And I pray by God's grace that he'll unlock this for us. In fact, let's just pray together before we really get going into this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your wonderful word, for your, for your son, Jesus Christ. He's came and he revealed the most magnificent parables that could have ever been revealed in, in when he was here 2,000 years ago. And we value those parables. When he was here, they asked him the question, why do you speak in parables? And Jesus said, for you it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest he spoke in parables because the pearls couldn't be cast before the swine. Father, we thank you for those parables and I ask that you will open the eyes of those that are listening, their ears, as well as mine, Father, to remember all that you showed me earlier today that I can disseminate that to the people and that they may be blessed as well as you have blessed me. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, so you ask, it shall be given you. You seeking, you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receives. And he that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Now, that's complete faith is what he's showing you. But then he says something very strange. Jesus says in verse 9, What man is there of you whom his son asks bread? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Now, I want you to notice something. A stone and a serpent. But he, if, if, if you, because he talks about this later, you know, you, in verse 11, he says, you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? This is where you're dealing with law. This is why he goes into the faith aspect of the message. In other words, if you ask, you shall receive. If you knock, it will be opened. But under the law, there is no mercy. Under the law, you're under a curse. Okay? He's referring to Numbers chapter 21. Actually, it goes even further back than that. Let me just look here real quick and see here. Um, and that would be under the, uh, the fish. If we just type in the word fish there, go to the book of Numbers where he speaks about that. Let me just see if I can find that real quick. Um, uh, maybe, let's see, here we go. Numbers 11.5. Yeah, Numbers 11.5, right? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. The cucumbers and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Okay? They were upset because of the manna. And they didn't want just manna any longer. They wanted fish. And so, under the law... Yahweh becomes angry with them. As we find in Numbers chapter 21, verse 5, And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, there is no water, and our soul loathes this light bread. And the Lord, The Lord sent to the people, fiery serpents. Hanachashim ha-sephirim. Literally, the sephirim serpents, or the flying serpents among the people. And they bit the people, and much of the people of Israel died. 
people came to Moses and we have sinned because we have spoken against the Lord and against you and pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from from us and Moses prayed for the people now actually the word serpents plural is not in the Hebrew text and why they translate that drives me nuts when they do it actually he actually says here they aser me'elenu et chanachash he they, they literally asked Moses to take away the serpent from being over them as a ruler over them. So it makes it makes me believe almost that these flying serpents, you could translate it fiery, but the correct way is winged serpents. And that is in the plural. Hanachashim, chasafrim. These flying serpents were being led by the serpent that the serpent is the same one in Genesis, all right? Where he says, and the woman said unto the serpent, el hanachash, there it is right there. The woman said unto the serpent, of the trees of the garden we may eat, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it lest you die. It's going to be important that we keep this in mind, this very passage, because Jesus is going to refer to it in Matthew 7. And I know you probably don't even know that, but he does in a parable. All right, so we go back. It's the serpent. And that serpent is ruling over them and they want Moses to take away that serpent from ruling over them. So the biting of the serpent seems to be a little bit awkward right there. Very awkward, doesn't it? All right, let's go back to Matthew. I don't want to get hung up on this for too long because there's more to this than just that. So Jesus is showing them, you being evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? Think about that. That runs real deep right there. Because the children of Israel, you know, they were complaining, but they were just remembering the fish, right? Watch what happens. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them? For this is the law and the prophets. What you want to have happen to you, then you do to them. Think about that in light of what we just read, right? Before I go further, let me take a look over here at Luke real quick. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna be going into this, this, this fruit of the tree there. This is also though where we get the, uh, let's see, is this where it's at? Uh, no, 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 it's not. Okay, I'll, I'll keep it where it's at. Let me just see. Okay, yeah, here it is. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. That's what Jesus means here by Matthew 7. Whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Think about it right think about that all right now let's move then to back to luke again given it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over all men given to your bosom for with the same measure that you meet with all it shall be measured to you again this is why the law is a curse and he spoke a parable unto them can the blind lead the blind Shall they not both fall into the ditch? What did Jesus say about the Pharisees and Sadducees? You be blind leaders of the blind. Remember that? Let me just pull that up just, just as a reminder. Okay. And maybe that'll also make sense. Yeah, Matthew 15, 14. See? We'll go to verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Wow. 
my oh let's just we need to pull this up on the screen that's that is such a powerful statement in itself and i don't want to lose it because it's going to go right along with what we're already talking about matthew 15. let's jump back over see where we're at we're right there at verse 13. so let's jump whoa how did we end up there don't want to be there let's let's get to matthew run back down here again jump in matthew chapter 15. And we're going to pop over here. I don't know why it's not wanting to go there, boy, but it's not wanting us to be able to get into that particular passage there. Hmm. Now we got into it. Great. Thank you, Father. Wow. Oh, this was a beautiful one, too. But in vain they do worship me, teach him for doctrines, the commandments of men. Let's back up to verse 7. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. That's exactly what the Pharisees did then as well as they do now. They're teaching Talmudic doctrines, even in Jesus, when he's talking about it, he says things like, you know, you've heard it said of them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, you know, if your brother compels you to go with him a mile, go with him twain. If he takes your coat, give him your cloak also. So he says, you teach for doctrines, the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, hear and understand. Not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Know you that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Hold that one in your mind right there, okay? That one you need to remember too. Let them alone. They be blind, leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. So when they try to tell you that you need to be up underneath these rabbis of Israel and stuff today, remember, they are the children of the Pharisees. And any messianic teacher that would teach such lies as that, like, for example, I, my wife was just playing a video of Yitzhak Shapira. And he was saying in his very video, based on gematria, that the word Nachash, which is serpent, and Mashiach, which is Messiah, or anointed, are the same numeric value. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. He's going to go there. Just he's going to play number games with the word of God. So he puts them equal, the serpent and the Messiah. As it says, if, you, if they be blind leaders of the blind, if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. And that's exactly what's happening. All right. Sorry to be diverted on that, friends. Anyway, so we go on and we continue to read here. Enter you into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go uh, thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. Remember the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? No, you don't. Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Now, again, remember, we're looking at judge not, lest you, that you be not judged, right? We're talking about the law. Now we're talking about two different trees. 
What is he referring to? He's referring back over here to Genesis. Remember where the, the argument comes down, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die, for God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Right? Your eyes will be open. No. <laughs> if the blind lead the blind, right? And when, when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and she gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. The eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves girdles. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden toward the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto the man and said unto him, Where are you? He said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Notice what God said, Who told you that you, you was naked? Have you eaten of the tree, wherefore I commanded you you should not eat? And the man said, The woman you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, <clears throat> That this that, that you have done. And the woman said, or excuse me, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, Hold this close now. Cursed are you from among all cattle, from among all the beasts, from the field. And upon your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. You, they, they put on there they, but it actually says he, in the Hebrew right there. Who? He, Yashufech Rosh. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise their heel. I want you to hold that one there too. Right? Let's jump back over here then and continue on. So when it speaks here, even every good tree brings forth good fruit, but every corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. That refers right back to the Genesis account, the tree of life, which Christ was that tree of life. He was the eighth uh, Chaim, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the eighth uh, Yodea ve uh, Ra'a, was the tree that the serpent was on. Remember that little image they often show? Well, that's the Kabbalah tree, but this one here, serpent hanging up in the tree there, Eve eating an apple. There's your imagery for it. And of course, they, as I said, they glorified in Kabbalah circles there, the Sephirot tree there. There you go right there. That's, that's them glorifying. I'll blow it up so you can see that a little bit better there with their serpent in the Kabbalah tree. So if you want to do Kabbalah, there you go. You're going right into the tree that the Pharisees use. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So you know what's going to happen to that tree. All right. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name have cast out devils and in your name done many wonderful works? And then I'll profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken to him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Think about it. Now, Christ Jesus is that rock, right? We know that. Paul even says that. He was that rock. So your house, your spiritual house, is to be built on Christ. And then the fruit that comes from the tree of life will breathe in you, his Holy Spirit. Remember what happens later on that there? When, or, when, or actually back when God first creates Adam, and that's in chapter 2, I believe it is. You know, he breathes 
into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He become, that man becomes a living soul, but he breathed into him the life, plural, from the tree of life. Therefore, the fruit of the tree of life, which was life, is what he become. Adam was the first man. Jesus was the second Adam. Remember what Jesus did after his resurrection from the tomb? He took and breathed upon his apostles and he said, receive ye the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. What was he doing? giving them that fruit of the tree of life they had become, see? So they were building their house upon the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. Notice that. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew. You've got the former latter rain. you got the wind of the Holy Spirit being blown in there. That house can withstand all those things there. And the house stood and it didn't fall because why it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be likened and, excuse me, and every one that hears these sayings of mine and does them not, okay, does them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descends, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Do you realize what he's talking about right there? When he says you built your house upon the sand? Let's go back to Genesis and take a peek at it, and then we'll know what it means. In Genesis chapter 3, as we go down and we find out that the curse comes in because of what the serpent does, what does God say to that serpent? Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. The serpent's food becomes the dirt of the earth. His house, his body, so to speak, becomes a house built on sand. When you build your house upon the law, you're going to sink. It will not stand. You see, the law is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's not just bad things that come off of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's good and bad come off of it. Or the knowledge to know what's good and what's bad. This is why the rabbis today believe that the serpent was a good guy. Okay? Because in essence, they're getting the law to know what's right and what's wrong. But we know from what Paul taught us as well that the law was a curse. Let's back up here. We're in Galatians chapter 3. For as many as are, are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Now, how many of you remember what I just said earlier, right? Matthew, it all links together. We'll go back up here, right? What happens? Jesus goes, judge not lest you be judged. Then he gets into, you shall, you know, for what judgment you shall judge, you shall, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. But then he goes into this beautiful analogy after he gets to, you know, getting the beam out of your eye and, you know, so you can see clearly. Then he goes into the faith. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And him that knocketh it shall be opened. There's your faith. Just like Paul gets it over here, right? After he deals with the curse of the law, he goes into, for it is evident, the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. In other words, the man that, in other words, if you're going to keep the law, 
You're going to have to live by that law. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Think about that. There's your Genesis account as I showed you the picture depicting the serpent in the tree, right? He was a cursed individual. He was cursed because of putting Adam and Eve. He took them from a life of faith and placed them under the curse of the law that they would have to live by a law. Now, as Paul said, the law was a schoolmaster. It served a purpose. But Christ come to redeem us back from under the law and put us back in faith to where we can live by faith and not by a law. Okay? This is what we had need of. This is what we need. We don't need the curse of the law any longer. So we go back down in here in Matthew 7. And like I said, it's beautiful right here. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto the foolish man which built his house upon the sand. You see, because the serpent was cursed to go upon his belly, he becomes the one that lives from the dust of the earth. And if your house is built upon that law, you're built upon that curse because the serpent was that curse. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. That's, that is showing exactly what happened because even the temple that was in Jerusalem failed. Because why? That house was built upon the sand. The sand is because the curse that came along there, when the serpent was cursed, it brought the law in, and therefore the temple that set in Jerusalem was built upon the curse. Upon the sand. As we know, the serpent, is, I want to make sure you get this now, the serpent is cursed to go on his belly, but he's the one that caused us to have to be under a law for all those years. Now granted, Moses gives a law later. I'm not talking about as far as at that very moment. But the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. I believe Jesus is talking about there the very, the very let, let, me, let me show you what he's talking about when that wind comes, which brings about the destruction of the second temple, right? Let's take a look at where that would be at. Where would that be, Steve? If, if you're, what you're saying, where is that winds that caused that to fall? Acts chapter two. And I think you already know where we're going now, right? What does it say here? And there appeared to them, let's see. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing and mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire that set upon each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and they were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout men of every nation under heaven See, when that mighty Russian wind came in, it wasn't too many more years after that come crumbling down the house that was built upon the sand, the law itself. And the house that was built upon the rock, Christ Jesus, it stands the test of time. It weathers the test of time. Came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings and the people were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. There again, why? Because of who he was, right? Just in closing, let me just say this here. In Joel and in Hosea, it speaks of the former and latter rain. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he gives you the former rain in just measure. And he causes to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain at the first. Remember, the scripture says in Matthew right there, and the rain descended and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell. What was the what rain would cause the temple to come crumbling down? Right, it's right there. It's the former and latter rain. What is it? 
He giveth you the former rain. What does he say? Ki natan lechem et ha He gives them the righteous teaching. That's what it really says. He caused to come down. Actually says, and, and he brings down to them rain, teaching the former and at the first. He restored the word of Almighty God. So that rain and that mighty Russian wind brought all down the law that had been built on the sand. And how what sand was that built on? Because the serpent was cursed to go on his belly and dust was going to be his meat. So it shows that that law was built upon the do's and don'ts. Yeah, their eyes were opened. They knew what to do and what not to do. But it was the curse. Cursed is he, everyone that hangs on a tree. Jesus became the curse to bring down that house. I trust it's a blessing to you today. I'm Stephen Benoon. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And I hope this really is a blessing to you as much as it blessed me. Thank you, and God bless you. Again, don't forget, if God lays upon your heart and you want to be a part of help us with the ministry here, uh, you can do so just by visiting our website. Only thing I have it up here now, but I'll just throw it back up here real quick. Again, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And you can donate online or via our mailing address there. Thank you and blessings to you all.